It's time for the round table. This week, a big blow up for orbital science in Virginia, a big win for startups versus big labor in the district, and a big question mark now in the Maryland governor's race. Here to talk about the business headlines this week, Washington Business Journal's Jill Toro and WAMU transportation reporter Martin DeCaro. Welcome to you both. Jill, let's start with you. The world saw the blow up that happened in Virginia this week, and it was a local company that mm -hmm. built what was supposed to be a launch that headed to the U.S. Uh, to the space station, International Space Station. What happened to the orbital science mission? Uh, well, we'll find a lot out more as the investigation happens. But what everybody's talking about, and even what Elon Musk mentioned two years ago, and a bit of irony. Um, Elon are Musk, who works for uh, who SpaceX was involved in the competition, and is not shy about being a little snarky <laughs> when it comes to competitors. Um, but they, everyone is talking about the rocket engines that Orbital uses. They were developed by um, a Russian company. They have been out of production for decades, so they are relying on engines that were made in the 1960s, a stockpile. You brought up Elon Musk comments that you reported mm -hmm. on where he said at the time, I'm not joking, they're actually using these, and he couldn't believe it. So even though he's with the competition, he is a smart guy. Does this cast doubt on orbital science decision to use those rocket engines and what does it mean for a future that was supposed to be bright for that company? Well, the thing to keep in mind is Orbital has been trying to get out of using these engines for quite a while. They've been trying to use engines used by United Launch Alliance, another competitor, but they have a bit of a monopoly on those because they have an exclusive agreement. And they have said, which is most important, Orbital said, the CEO just said, that they are in the process of, of finding a different engine and I think they might have actually found one. It's a matter of getting it into the rotation and that could take up to two years. So big picture for orbital science from this blow The big up. issue is that the blow up itself covered by insurance and all of that. The problem is that it's pretty likely, almost guaranteed, that the launch that's supposed to happen in April is going to be delayed. How delayed it will be is going to determine how much of a hit that will take to the bottom line and then what the problem is and what it means for fixing it, obviously, will determine how they do with future launches and so forth. So it, a lot remains to be seen in terms of what the actual causes were. Martin DeCaro, uh, a victory for uh, startups in uh, wanting to do business in the district. Uber, Lyft, Sidecar, all of the popular uh, ride programs that had been battling the very powerful taxi cab commission in the district that had backing from big labor, the Teamsters. Big labor lost. What happened? Well, this was never going to be anything but a victory for Uber and their ride sharing platform, Uber X and Lyft and Sidecar. The legal limbo is over, essentially. The D.C. Council, in a 12 to 1 vote, legalized formally these ride sharing. They're not really ride sharing, it's more discount taxi, it's a for profit enterprise. They uh, legalized these ride sharing apps, and uh, some of the big issues were finally resolved. Uh, insurance gaps are taken care of in the legislation that was written by uh, Council Member Mary. Uh, but in a win for Uber, the other big issue is background checks. And Uber, Lyft, Sidecar will not have to change their background check policies. They'll continue to use third-party screeners instead of the FBI fingerprint background checks that are used by cabs. But there were other things uh, that were pro-consumer that Councilman Graham and some yeah. others were push, uh, pushing that didn't win. No. Uh, overall, are we seeing a sea change in D.C. government in terms of trying to be more pro-business uh, in writing new rules? Well, absolutely. This legislation embraces these technological innovators. They, they call themselves disruptors. Consumers like Uber. They like Lyft. They wanted these services in the district, and there was a hole that was opened and exploited by the Uber and Lyfts of the world because of the relatively poor service of the D.C. taxi cabs for a long time. Remember, it's only been a year or so since cabs even had credit card machines yeah. inside their back seats. So this is a big win for Uber. They like to say it's a win for consumers. Uber is here to stay, and now the taxi industry has to find ways to innovate so they can compete. Jill Toro, we are all watching Tuesday's races. There's a lot of hot races nationwide, but there are some races locally that are starting to get big attention nationwide. A lot of eyes now on the Maryland governor's race. Mm -hmm. Nobody expected it to be as close as it is now. What, what has Larry Hogan been saying that's been resonating with voters, with the business community? Well, you know, broadly he talks jobs and taxes, but what he's really kind of keying into is the fact that under Democratic leadership, Maryland has not fared well in the business community. And business Martin O'Malley would beg to differ, Anthony Brown would beg to differ, but, but he if you look has been actually, hitting hard on this it's issue. It's true, you've been hitting hard, and there has been a big play for cyber and so forth, but they're always going to be compared to Virginia. I mean, that is just the reality, and Virginia rules the day when it comes to the business community. Seen so as a better friendly 
great business climate, better taxes. It and is. So, I mean, what he's basically focused on is bringing in more companies and also enabling small businesses to grow that are already here instead of leaving. He's talked about overhauling economic development in a way that provides more incentives for companies that come in. So he's playing it up because that connects to jobs, that con connects to taxes in terms of how these companies are actually taxed along the way. So he is he's kind of really hitting that hard, and it's definitely resonating. It's resonating. A state that's two Democrats for every one Republican. Republican. Yeah. He's within the margin of error. It is going to be a fascinating day on Tuesday in Maryland. Martin, another race that uh, is being watched closely nationwide is in Virginia, the 10th Congressional District. We've interviewed both Barbara Comstock and John Faust about this race, but transportation has actually been an issue when it's not usually a big priority in other congressional races. I mean, you talk to anybody in the business community in Virginia, Northern Virginia, is there a bigger issue than transportation? So the candidates have been uh, uh, quibbling over the state transportation overhaul that was done by uh, Governor McDonnell uh, to replace the gas tax and increase the sales tax to pay for roads and bridges and rail. And Barbara Comstack voted against that. She's against raising tax revenues to pay for transportation. John Faust has hit her pretty hard on on that. But when they're in Congress, they're going to have to deal with the federal transportation crisis, the funding crisis that comes up every few months, and neither supports raising the federal gas tax to fund transportation nationally. Lots of races to watch. Thank you both for joining us, and we'll be right back.